Hello and welcome to the next installment of the As I Learn WatchKit video tutorial series. Today I'm going to be talking about displaying tabular data in your WatchKit application. Tabular data, by that I just mean a list of things. And WatchKit provides a mechanism by which we can do this. In one of the weird ways, WatchKit doesn't let you have access to things like swipe gestures, to anything other than taps, which is largely what I covered uh, in two episodes ago when I talked about the different components that we have available to us. But we can still have more content than would fit on one screen. And this will sometimes come into play with just regular components where you can lay out bigger things than would fit on a screen. And the user can scroll up and down to show them. But more often than not, what that's gonna come into play is with tabular data. So when you wanna show a list of things, you know, a list of items in their grocery list, a list of articles in their RSS reader, a list of ingredients in a recipe, Whatever it is, when you have a collection of things that you want to display, you're going to need to just use the tabular methods available in WatchKit to do that display. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started. All right, so here I am inside of an Xcode project set up with a WatchKit app. This is an empty one, so if you're not familiar with kind of how you get to this point, go back to a couple of videos back in the series where I talk about setting up a basic WatchKit app. But once you have one set up, you'll have something that kind of looks like this. And so if I'm going to display tabular data. Mostly what I need is I'm going to need to take a table, um, which is just the one of the table components inside of Interface Builder for my application, and drag that up into the application um, storyboard itself. Um, it's going to basically do create a table, create a table row controller, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then it'll put a, give you a group. And groups, like I talked about last week, are the basic uh, building block for how you can compose UI components. For the purposes of this explanation, I'm just going to put a label inside of that uh, inside of that row, um, that row group. You could put anything in there. You can put images. You can put other components. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to put another table, but you know you could put any of the normal components that you'd want to do inside of a table uh, inside that row. And so for me, I'm just going to grab a label and throw that in here. And so now I have a label that is available for display of the, the text in, my, in the application that I'm going to do. This is just an example application. Exactly what you put in there, like I said, would vary. Now, the next thing you need in order to actually create um, the, to put something in that, display, in, in that display, is you need what's called a row controller. And a row controller is just a, a in some ways, you could think of it just as a placeholder object. It's just an NS object that will contain and manage the outlets from your storyboard to your interface controller, to your main place that's actually going to do, manage the actual data. And it just exists to be instantiated, to have its values set to something, and then it's have its values then passed on um, to the display. It's just kind of like an intermediary object. And you just do that by just creating a new file a Cocoa Touch class, um, and it's going to be a subclass just of NS object. So it's just a basic object. And so in this case, I'm just going to call it uh, my row controller. And you just, it, I will add it to the actual extension itself. Uh, this is, you know, in terms of which target it goes into. And like I said, its purpose in life is just to act, act as an intermediary object between things. And so you put whatever it is that you want to display. In my case, a label, you add a reference to it inside of that row controller. And so I take the row controller, and I need to set its class. And so I come over, I select the row controller part in the scene, and come over to the custom class. And this is where I will put in my row controller. So now it knows that the row controller for this table is of a type my row controller. You'd obviously put whatever was relevant for you in there. And similarly, you need to give it an identifier. And so these are my rows. So, um, so now I have my table row controller set up. But my table row controller doesn't have any references to the things that I need um, to actually tie, to tie everything together. So I'm going to come in here and click the assistant editor, which will bring up um, a variety, you know, it will bring up the interface controller by default. I'm just going to go ahead and select the uh, row controller that we just created, so I can have a reference to it. And I'm just going to create an outlet from the label to my row controller. 
And so this is just my label, which is important for reasons I will get to in a moment. But now I have a row controller, which has an identifier, a custom class, and a reference uh, to an outlet containing the, uh, the label that we're talking about. And that's all of the actual like UI setup and things that you have to do. The rest of the work will all be done inside of the actual interface controller for this class. And to do that, I'll go over into here. I'll expand this out and get started. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add um, and a basic NS array, um, which is just going to hold our data in it. This isn't obviously actually doing anything particularly clever. Um, so I'm just going to have you know self.data equals, and then I'm going to just create an array of um, of strings. This is obviously you typically be loading this data from you know from from the network from your app group, if it's relevant for your application, you know, pulling it in from the main application, somehow you're going to have some data that you want to display. But I'm just going to assign it into the array because that's simplest. And then in my will activate method, I'm going to go ahead and set up the table, which is reminding me that I did forget something. I need to create a reference to the, tab to the table inside of my uh, my interface controller. And so I need to come in here and create a reference to the table so I can reference it inside of my interface controller, um, which I should have done to start with, but I didn't. So, because now I need to come in here and say, um, I need to, uh, for that table, and I need to set the number of rows and the row type. Um, so the number of rows in this case is going to be the number of, you know, the count of the objects I just put in, the, in my array. In this case, it's three. You know, I, I could type three in there, but you know, for the purposes of what I'm doing, you'll pull in however much data you need and you'll, put, you'll tell it how many rows. And you'll give it a type. And the row type, I believe, is the row type identifier, which I called it my rows. Um, and so you just come in here and say my rows. And then once I've set the number of rows in my table, I need to actually put the data from my array into the actual display. So I've told my table it has this many rows, in this case three, um, but I need to actually do something with those. And so what I need to do is I need to iterate over all of the data that I have and put, just put that into, into the actual table. Uh, Apple recommends that you don't have too large collections of this. This isn't the kind of thing where you want to kind of treat it like a UI table view, which can have you know, hundreds or thousands of things. I think they say maybe 10, 15 is a great number uh, for what you want to display because it's keeping in mind it's on a tiny display on someone's watch. But you can, there's no, not a hard limit. But basically, you're just going to iterate over the list. And so to do that, I'll just set up a for loop, you know, and so I'll have, so, you know, have an index. Well, I'll do, I'll do this while index is less than self.data count. And then I'll, I, you know, increment my index. Nothing too cl clever there. Now at each one of these indexes, I need to, to need two things. I need the string value that I want to put into the title or if you were doing other things, you know, the image associated with that row, the state for a checkbox, whatever it is. In this case, I just have a string. So I'm just going to grab that out of my data array. And I'm going to call that title. And so I just get data, object at index, index. So now I have the title I need. But now what I need is the row controller. And this is the same row controller that we had created a minute ago uh, and associated with our table. So the first thing I need to do is I need to import that row controller. So I can reference it and I can know about the labels inside of it. And then the next thing I'll need to do is create, a, create an instance of it. Um, and so I'll grab the controller. And then the way, the way I get it is I say self.myTable row controller at index. And again, I just grab out the index. And now for the magic part is where I'll take that controller and I'll grab my reference to the label. And so this is the label we set up in Interface Builder. And now I can set the set text on that. And in this case, I will set it to title. And so now I have an instance of my row controller. So I have a reference to the label. 
I have an instance of the title, so I have the title there, and I can combine those two together to actually set the value from our data into the actual display. And if I, if I run this, or if I compile this, I will get one error though. Uh, and before I show this, this is just something that caught me out initially. Um, when you create your row controller, um, it'll, in, by default, it'll import from foundation, and you just need to change that so it imports from a watch kit, um, just so that it has references to the WKA's interface label or the images or all the other things you need to do. Um, but it doesn't really matter anything else, like there's nothing fancy going on there, you just need to make sure that it has a reference to more than just foundation. And there we go. Now we have, you know, when, the interf when this watch app wakes up, it'll put some data into its array, one, two, three, and then it'll tell the table how many rows it has, so it knows how many, uh, how many row controllers to instantiate. Then we just iterate over those and put the data into them. And so now let's build and you know, run and see it in action. And so it's gonna take a moment and then it should launch the simulator and voila, here we go. Here is a watch kit app showing tabular data and it doesn't scroll because there's not enough data in it. But if I come back in here and add a few more, then rerun it, it should, uh, you should, it should add, all, add those rows into our data, it does, and it'll start showing you between them. And that's really all there is to it. That's how you display data in a WatchKit application. And then obviously the, the next thing, which is beyond what I'll talk about today, but you, the next step is you can just instantiate the methods necessary to respond to actions for each row, uh, which is very straightforward, uh, and then you can use that to you know, respond to something where they select one, one would you know, respond to whatever be relevant for one, and so on from there. Or you can put buttons inside your group and respond to things there. But that's all you have to do. Like the actual displaying of tabular data, it's three or four, five, three, four, five lines of code, a little bit of setup in, iTunes, in Interface Builder. But overall, it's a pretty straightforward thing, which means that it's very easy to display this kind of data. And so if you have an application whose iPhone component displays a lot of tabular data, I would encourage you to think about would a WatchKit ex extension that just displayed that same data be useful? And that's it for today's tutorial. Hopefully that was helpful. Next week, I'm gonna be taking a break from the WatchKit series and instead probably gonna do a video about how to create app previews, which is a topic that's probably more generally applicable to all app developers. So if that sounds interesting, subscribe here on YouTube or subscribe to my website, david-smith.org to know when that comes out. Thanks.